Okay. Uh, well, I have been asked to talk about uh, uh, the aspects of uh, microquasars in high energy astrophysics, namely the production of jets and also of uh, gamma ray emission. But actually, uh, since, uh, 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 since the, the last decade, uh, I have been working mostly on the impact that uh, microquasars might have in cosmology and uh, in the formation of the first galaxies during the reionization epoch of the uh, universe. And uh, most lately, the relation with the gravitational wave uh, sources that have been detected. Now, but before going into that, I would like to make a, a comment on what uh, Roger mentioned at the beginning of his talk, the origin of the idea of uh, what we talk, we call nowadays uh, black hole, that actually, uh, well, uh, John Mitchell in, in uh, the 18th century uh, uh, showed in the context of the corpuscular uh, theory of light that there should exist uh, black holes, but also he predicted how they could be spotted on, in the sky. Uh, namely uh, when they are part of binary systems and one can see the star uh, turning around the, the black hole. Now, uh, when I arrived to France uh, in 1990, uh, very rapidly uh, my, uh, I was naturalized French and uh, my French uh, uh, colleagues told me that uh, if I continue just to mention Mitchell, they will take my naturalization away. And um, so I, 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 uh, they said, you should mention uh, Laplace. And, uh, and uh, Laplace, in the second edi edition of the Exposition du Système du Monde, uh, where Laplace uh, uh, proposed the, the uh, Laplace model for the formation of the solar system. Uh, only in that edition, he, uh, he uh, made a similar calculation as, uh, as uh, Mitchell, but uh, he went uh, further and he proposed that uh, this type of objects uh, that we call black holes could exist in very large numbers. And uh, he says that uh, there, there could be uh, as numerous as stars in the universe. Uh, and secondly, he uh, uh, proposed in some way the idea of uh, supermassive black holes because he proposed that the largest objects in the universe uh, uh, the, uh, should be uh, the, 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 the objects, the more massive uh, and, and energetic, luminous uh, in French, uh, that will be invisible. So, uh, and this idea then, there was five editions of uh, the Exposition du Système du Monde, and for some reason, uh, uh, he didn't uh, repeat this proposition. But I have asked myself how Laplace had this, uh, this uh, intuition that, uh, uh, that black holes could be as numerous as stars in the universe and that the single objects, the most energetic ones, or that produce the most energetic phenomena should be obscured, namely black holes. Uh, so, uh, I was uh, inv invited by Linden Bell to, to give a talk in the, in the Royal Academy in, in London. 
And uh, so, and I showed this, this biograph. And, uh, and then everybody, when I finished, raised the hand. And they asked, who was first? You know that the British and the French have been in war always. Uh, and nowadays, again, uh, with the problem of uh, Brexit exit. Uh. And uh, so, uh, uh, and I said, well, you can infer it. It was in the fourth year of the French Republic. And uh, nobody apparently knew when was the French Revolution. <laughs> <laughs> so I kept uh, talking and, uh, and uh, well, that was an interesting experience. Now, <clears throat> the interest in uh, microquasars from my part, I will do a, a sort of historic uh, 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 racont. Uh, I became very interested in this type of sources because I was hired in, in France to continue working on ultraluminous infrared galaxies. But uh, I started to uh, learn that uh, a satellite uh, called Granat, that was a, a, a satellite out of a collaboration between the Soviet Union, France, and Denmark, uh, had uh, uh, spotted uh, sorry from an Einstein source which is uh, near the in the galactic center region uh, a, uh, a uh, um, an emission a broad emission around uh, 511 kilo electron volts that is the energy that correspond to the annihilation between positrons and electrons. And uh, this source, you can see here, uh, in the low hard state, it was detected uh, a, a very broad emission in between 480 and 511 kilo electron volts, which could be interpreted as redshifted annihilation line. And uh, an editorial article in Physics Today called this source the Great Annihilator. So uh, the question uh, we asked at that time in 1992 it was what uh, are the radio and infrared counterparts of this uh, uh, proposed uh, Great Annihilator? And uh, you can see here the Chandra image of the uh, galactic center region, and here the granite and integral image. And as you can see, uh, this source, the 1E, uh, this Einstein source, is the <clears throat> most energetic source in, at that time in the galactic center region. You can see here Sagittarius A star, and it, it is not prominent. And uh, so, uh, the infrared uh, observations uh, uh, to spot the nature of this source uh, was uh, that uh, it is uh, a black hole from the X-rays because the, in the X-rays this source was uh, 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 comparable to Sigma 6 one and, uh, and the, uh, the donor star will be a very low mass mass star. But at radio uh, wavelengths, the, compact, the, the counterpart is a compact uh, source that uh, we were surprised when uh, we saw this. Uh, it is uh, at the center of two-sided uh, jets that are the trace of uh, uh, the synchrotron emission from uh, relativistic jets that are ejected in a collimated way up to distances of a few uh, light years. So on microquasars now there have been uh, about 10 international meetings on microquasars including a uh, IAU symposium in the year uh, 2010. So 
the, this term uh, microquasar was, uh, well, uh, let me tell you that my, my first postdoc was in Jodrell Bank, and when I went to Jodrell Bank, my colleagues and friends said, oh no, this is not, uh, this is just a background radio, so a radio galaxy that happened to be uh, accidentally uh, superposed on the X-ray galactic source. And, uh, and uh, after 23 years now, uh, a group from, uh, <clears throat> from southern Spain, led by uh, Joseph Marti, uh, uh, have uh, taken the, all the data from the VLA and find that the jets along the, the whole extension, they change in terms of years, in scales of years, which implies that these uh, radio jets are in our galaxy, cannot be in a very distant uh, uh, radio galaxy. So <clears throat> this is a galactic source, and actually I must confess I had always the very profound uh, doubt uh, if uh, the criticism uh, from my colleagues from Jodrell Bank couldn't be uh, right after all. So the quasar micro quasar analogy is not just a uh, morphological uh, an, uh, analogy, it's a, uh, uh, an analogy based in physics and, uh, and the idea is that uh, that the phenomenology around uh, black holes can be described as uh, with a unique system of equations uh, with the uh, fact that the scales of length and time are proportional to the mass of the black hole. And uh, so uh, here you see the case of a, of a quasar and here of a microquasar, the quasar is uh, host uh, uh, a supermassive black hole that accretes uh, from uh, stars or the interstellar uh, environment. And in microquasars, you have a, a stellar mass black hole that produces jets that go up to distances of uh, a few light years, whereas in quasars, uh, the jets can go up to distances of um, of a megaparsec. So the question that uh, uh, we asked at that time was whether it could be analogous apparent uh, superluminal motions as those that are cur were currently found in quasars and radio galaxies. And, uh, and this uh, took us uh, two years and we saw a major, major ejection event. This is in collaboration with uh, Luis Felipe Rodriguez, who at that time was the director of the uh, Institute of Astronomy of the University of Mexico, the UNAM. And, uh, and uh, the source is, uh, this is the name of the source, and it's a source discovered by Granat and uh, it's a black hole of about 10 solar masses that is accreting by a rush low overflow mass from a uh, red giant of uh, half a solar mass. And uh, as you can see in this ejection event, this point is, uh, is the position of the, of the black hole binary at a distance of about uh, uh, eight uh, kiloparsecs from the from the sun, and in the in an interval of uh, one month and a half, we saw a major ejection event, where you see an asymmetry. First, the the, the apparent speed of, on the plane of the sky of this uh, plasma is greater than the speed of light, and uh, and the cloud the plasma moving to the left. Uh, moves faster than the one on the right and is also brighter. And, uh, <clears throat> and this ejection event uh, 
If one assumes that in the ejecta there is one proton per electron, and that in order this plasma to produce radio waves at centimeter wavelengths must have uh, internal Lorentz factors of 10 to the 3, then uh, one can derive that the kinetic energy of this ejection event was 3 times 10 to the 46 ergs, which will correspond to about one third of the mass of the moon uh, accelerated uh, to 95 percent the speed of light. So uh, this is an extremely, under these assumptions, an extremely uh, energetic uh, phenomenon. And uh, the, jet, <coughs> the jets form, uh, the jet axis form uh, uh, 70 degrees with a line, line of sight, <coughs> and uh, no detection of very high energy uh, GVs or TVs energies uh, has been detected so far. Uh, this was uh, to reproduce uh, 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 these observations in terms of uh, special relativity was the first uh, uh, problem in the Olympiads uh, of the following year in 1995 and with Luis Felipe, we, we, we felt a little depressed because to account for that, it took us uh, several days. And these guys uh, resolved the problem uh, in, uh, in 15 minutes. So, uh, yes, but I have been thinking about that. And the point is that one thing is when you are given the problem, and the other thing is when you have to formulate the problem to see the significance of what uh, you are observing. And, uh, well, that, that is uh, a story. Uh, and then uh, we have uh, powerful jets also from, from SS-433. What uh, you see here, the scale is one or second. And uh, here you see this is, in, this is uh, uh, in 10 parsecs. And the jets uh, take place here and uh, are so energetic that are capable of blowing laterally the hosting uh, uh, nebula W50 at distances of tens of parsecs. So here there is uh, transport of energy uh, in a dark way. Uh, we don't see uh, uh, radio emission until there are uh, shocks. And uh, the, we know that uh, in these jets there are uh, nuclear, even uh, nuclei of iron also, uh, moving uh, at uh, uh, a quarter of the speed of light, which implies that the mechanical energy of uh, this source is about 10 to the 39 ergs per second. Uh, is larger than the luminosity that uh, we observe in the X-rays from this source. And uh, now Fermi, I will go through uh, microquasars and what Fermi and other uh, high energy uh, instruments have been detecting. Fermi detects from uh, uh, SS-433, a maximum energy at uh, 250 mega electron volts with ex extension until uh, 800 mega electron volts. And also I, I participated in the uh, magic anniversary in La Palma uh, last month and uh, it was a presentation by Sandoval where he showed that Hawk may have detected very high energy in the lobes of uh, SS-433, but further, further out. And uh, actually, the position of the claim Hawk detection uh, is beyond the, uh, the uh, sampling uh, that has been done with, uh, with magic. So there is the possibility that it is real and that magic has not detected uh, 
uh, uh, uh, uh, this emission because they didn't sample enough uh, 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 a larger area. Uh, well, uh, but magic has placed, uh, did not detect the source. Uh, they, they have uh, image uh, until here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and they have placed constraints on the particle acceleration fraction and the inner jet region and on the physics of the jet medium interactions. But uh, I know uh, that there will be a, pro a, a proposal uh, to extend observations with magic uh, over a larger area. Now, well, this is uh, an image that I wanted to show uh, after the talk. Uh, uh, this morning, uh, an, an image, uh, a radio image of, uh, of the, sorry. Of, S of uh, W50, and you can see that there are, the question, there are sort of, uh, uh, the question I ask myself, whether these structures that we see here uh, could be, uh, toroidal structures related to uh, what uh, Contopoulos uh, has uh, talked this morning. You know, it's uh, an open question. Now, <clears throat> now uh, has been seen in real time uh, moving X-ray jets from uh, two microquasars and uh, in the year 1998 there was uh, 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 a spectacular uh, outburst of uh, this source, this XTE source, and uh, in the year uh, 2000, it was observed, after observing nothing uh, with Chandra, a, uh, a shock region moving away and uh, slowing down. Uh, and this is interpreted uh, as a uh, transport of energy in the form of dark jets that manifest themselves when they are produce uh, shocks. And then four years after the, the, uh, the outburst on the other side, it was observed also a, uh, a low. So the question I ask is whether this is uh, a micro radio galaxy being seen form in real time, and because the scales of time of this phenomena in black holes of uh, solar masses is, uh, is, are very small. And we can observe the, the physics and the phenomena uh, in real time. Now we know that uh, uh, in these uh, uh, lobes, uh, electrons must be uh, accelerated to TeV energies because we see them in the X-rays, and since there are radio counterparts besides the X-rays, we know that this is uh, a synchrotron emission. The spectra is uh, synchrotron. So, uh, as you can see, because of the different scales of time, we can prove phenomena than, that in uh, AGNs we cannot probe, uh, because the scales of time are enormous when the black holes are of millions up to billions uh, solar masses. So, an area where, thanks to the fact that the scales of time of the phenomenology around uh, uh, stellar mass black holes are proportional to the mass of the black hole, uh, thanks to that we could prove for first time in one hour the connection between accretion into a black hole and the production of uh, ejections uh, and relativistic ejections. And you can see here uh, uh, in, in black are the, are the X-rays uh, measured from space by XTE that are coming from the inner uh, accretion disk uh, in infrared 
These infrared are observations made from Hawaii at two microns. And in blue, you can see the radio observations with, uh, uh, with the VLA. We had uh, with the VLA uh, several uh, frequencies. And, uh, and here, uh, this is the luminosity, normalized luminosity, and this is the hardness ratio of the inner accretion disk. And uh, as you can see, uh, there is the accretion disk goes in unstable, and suddenly it drops uh, the emission, which uh, might be interpreted uh, by the fact that perhaps the inner accretion disk went into the black hole through the horizon of the black hole, and during five uh, minutes, nothing happened. Five minutes here in this, uh, in, in this object is an eternity, eh, because the orbital period is, uh, is very small. And then suddenly, uh, and this corresponds to a change in the hardness ratio, and then uh, suddenly there is uh, a, 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 a spike that corresponds to a change again of the X-ray state of the inner accretion disk that marks the onset of a jet that first we observe it in the infrared, and then as the plasma expands, it becomes transparent as a function of time uh, to the radio uh, uh, wavelengths. And uh, what uh, it was striking is that uh, uh, we, to calculate this, this, uh, this uh, uh, time delay of the radio relative to the infrared peak uh, correspond exactly with what will be calculated with a paper by van der Laan in Nature in the 60s for AGNs, for jets in AGNs. So uh, this, is, this was for first time, of course, to get this, we, we got these simultaneous observations at different wavelengths at that time in, uh, in the decade of... Uh, 1900s after about uh, 50 tries because when we had the, all the instruments the source would not uh, collaborate will do nothing and so forth and uh, the fact that uh, there was no uh, thermonuclear explosion seen in the x-rays might imply that uh, uh, the compact object was not an object with a hard surface, namely a neutron star. I mean, this disappearing of the X-ray emission uh, is simply indicating that, uh, that uh, the frontier of the compact object is a horizon, namely that the compact object there is a, is a black hole. There is another interpretation, uh, but the interpretation we proposed at that time was the one that I have said. Now, uh, here you can see how works uh, accretion uh, uh, related to the onset of jets, uh, the connection between accretion and jets. And the idea is, uh, from my experience, Always, when you have a black hole accreting, you have jets, relativistic jets, of different quantities, but always there are jets. But sometimes we don't see them, as we didn't see them in Cygnus X1 uh, from the very beginning of this work. But finally, they have been seen, and the impact on the environment, and so forth. So, because of the scales of time, uh, uh, to, uh, to uh, approach the physics around uh, uh, black holes uh, is better to look uh, at microquasars to see uh, phenomena uh, at small scales of time, in small, small scales of time. 
But if you want to see in terms of the, of the size of the Schwarzschild radius, the image of the jets very close to the source is better to look at, for, for instance, uh, M87. Uh, so what I have been uh, proposing is that there should be more, if we w are interested in physics, the physics uh, of accreting uh, black holes, uh, there should be more synergy between the AGN and the microquasar uh, uh, communities uh, because you can see different aspects of, of the physics depending on the mass of the black hole. Now, uh, the, this, this uh, jet coupling has been very nicely uh, portrayed by Fender, Belloni, and Gallo in this cartoon where you can see how uh, in low mass uh, black hole X-ray binaries which is the process of, uh, that connects uh, accretion with ejection. Uh, we know that uh, when the source is in the, uh, low, uh, in the low heart state in the X-rays, that corresponds in the radio to a flat uh, radio source that is compact and has the size of, uh, uh, of, of the solar system, uh, of uh, about 100, a few hundred astronomical units. And, uh, and these uh, compact sources uh, uh, start to increase in luminosity. We know that uh, we have upper limits for the back Lorentz factors of these uh, relativistic jets that are smaller than two and uh, suddenly it's produced a change in the hardness ratio, as uh, I have shown in the previous uh, slide, and then there is the onset of a uh, uh, large uh, major ejection event, as was observed in the paper that uh, I have shown. And uh, in this case, the bulk Lorentz factors of the ejecta are larger than two. Uh, there are several questions. Uh, well, uh, actually, this type of this jet coupling, uh, it has been claimed, uh, for instance, for first time by Marshall et al. in an article in, in Nature that has been seen in 3C 120, and uh, and in other, and after that in another uh, quasars, but the observations, uh, observational time correspond to several years. Uh, contrary to the case that I have shown, that we did that in one hour. Uh, and uh, I want to uh, uh, stress that, uh, in fact, this, uh, this uh, connection between uh, accretion and ejection in uh, black hole systems uh, in uh, in, uh, in high mass uh, black hole X-ray binaries is da dazzled by, uh, by feedback from the donor star. It's complicated because you have a massive star that will produce uh, 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 X-rays, outflows of matter that will complicate uh, the phenomenology. In a, in a, uh, in a low mass uh, black hole uh, X-ray binary is much easier to to, to see this uh, is much, much cleaner, uh, the phenomenology. Now, uh, GV and TEV emission uh, from uh, compact binaries has been observed uh, from microquasars and uh, also uh, from uh, systems, from, uh, high, uh, from BE uh, systems, and uh, this is a cartoon uh, that uh, I published in an article that uh, uh, asked me uh, science. Uh, and you can see here uh, in, in, in uh, microquasars, uh, it is uh, thought that uh, you need a massive star and, uh, and the high energy emission is produced by the interaction of relativistic jets 
with the UV photons produced, for instance, by, by the uh, massive Donald star. Whereas in this case, you have a, a BE star, which, is, which are stars that rotate very rapidly and, uh, and shed uh, a disk of matter around. And the high energy emission detected at TEVs, for instance, from this uh, pulsar uh, uh, binary system, is produced by the interaction of, of the pulsar uh, uh, relativistic uh, ejection of particles with the matter that uh, has been shared by the, the B star. Now, uh, gamma rays uh, flares have been observed from the microquasar Cygnus X3. Uh, very likely is a black hole orbiting a wolf rayet star with a period of 4.8 hours. So the, the compact object is uh, orbiting inside the environment uh, of, the, of the star. And, uh, and the, uh, the gamma rays were observed from this source by Fermi and Agile. Uh, it, when the compact source was in superior uh, conjunction, namely on the opposite side relative to the observer. So the, 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 the jets from the accreting black hole will uh, inverse Compton upscatter uh, the UV photons to, uh, to gamma rays. And here you can see the evolution of this uh, radio source uh, uh, with a series of images obtained uh, recently with the European VLBI. And uh, you can see how uh, the, the source evolves at, uh, at radio wavelengths. Uh, the non-detection by magic uh, of this source uh, could be due to absorption in the very inner region of the binary. This is, uh, I mean, there should be production of uh, uh, of uh, very high energy uh, gamma rays, but uh, perhaps uh, they are absorbed in the environment. This is a proposal uh, made for the non-detection. So the first uh, microquasar detected by Ygret is LS5039 and has been also detected by Hess. Uh, by the group in uh, Barcelona. Uh, here you see the uh, radio image. And uh, very uh, uh, lately uh, there has been uh, a detection also with, with Hess. But here the situation is different. Uh, actually the highest energy emission in gamma rays is uh, completely reversed to that that I have uh, uh, show you in the previous source. So, uh, uh, and uh, when you have a massive star, uh, things get complicated because the massive star uh, uh, affects the environment and there is no clear, clean uh, accretion and ejection into the compact object. So, uh, Six years after uh, the first cartoon that I have shown, uh, science asked me again to, uh, to make a, a, a new perspective article, and you can, can see here several sources of different nature that have been detected at, at high energies uh, by different instruments. Uh, Well, it is interesting, uh, a recent result uh, uh, on Cygnus X1. Uh, uh, during uh, uh, several years, uh, people said, but, but where are the jets in, in Cygnus X1? I mean, it's a, uh, and, well, uh, and uh, a few years uh, ago, uh, they, uh, so this is uh, the position of Cygnus 6 one And here you see a BLBI image of a compact jet in Cygnus 6 one that uh, 
points to a bow shock at a distance of five parsecs. Uh, and nothing is detected at radio wavelengths in between the source and the bow shock. Mm. Uh, this is very nice work uh, using West, Westerbork. And uh, so uh, the idea is that Cygnus X1 dissipate the bulk of the accretion power in the form of dark, radiative, inefficient, relativistic outflows rather than locally in the X-ray emitting inflow. And the uh, magic uh, had a hint, I would say, this is their world, of a detection at uh, four sigma that was coincident with uh, flares detected by Integral, SWIFT, and XTE. And, uh, but uh, this uh, gamma ray emission was not uh, observed uh, with magic, again, in more extensive observations. Uh, I, in the magic uh, meeting, I, I asked, uh, well, uh, what do you think? I mean, uh, uh, and the, the answer that I, I got is that uh, during these more extensive observations, there was no uh, uh, prominent flare as the one that had been detected, that had been uh, uh, coincident with the uh, for uh, sigma detection. So I think it's an open question whether uh, Sigma 6 one is producing uh, very high uh, energy uh, uh, gamma rays. Uh, so, uh, well, there is uh, only one low mass uh, black hole binary that has been detected uh, in gamma rays and is this one uh, is a, a black hole with a mass in between 9 and 15 solar masses with a donor star that is a low mass star but is a subgiant star so a subgiant star might shed uv photons to uh, produce the, the seeds for upscattering. And, uh, and here you see uh, it has been claimed that uh, perhaps uh, an, a redshifted annihilation line has been detected uh, from, from this source. So uh, the, the question is whether this source and another source could be micro blazers, namely because this, the phenomenology that these two sources uh, show is very extremely rapid. And this implies that the time of the phenomena are compressed due to the fact that the jets uh, perhaps are pointing very close to the line of sight, to the source. And uh, this is an, an open uh, question. Uh, this is... Uh, is not the Mexican Rodriguez, it's the French Rodriguez, it's, uh, uh, who uh, has uh, proposed this, that these uh, sources, these microquasars, might be micro blazers. And they should be uh, in the galaxy. But it's difficult to, to follow, uh, to make the observations. So the conclusion of microquasars as uh, very high energy uh, as high energy and very high energy sources, here you can see the definition that I use, is that uh, most microquasars have been detected as gamma ray sources when they are sources of powerful jets, when the compact object typically has a high mass donor star with dense winds and strong radiation fields. Uh, but there is an exception that is uh, this low mass uh, black hole binary. Uh, third, the compact object typically is near superior cons conjunctions, like uh, in Cygnus X3, but uh, there is uh, the case of uh, LS5039, which is opposite. Uh, the jet inclination angle relative to the line of sight must be uh, small, uh, but uh, this is not uh, true for SS433. Uh, 
the high energy or very high energy emission may arise in the inner jet region or in the external shock regions by leptonic and or hadronic mechanisms. And the question of microblazers in our galaxy uh, and uh, in, the, uh, in the magic meeting uh, uh, it was the PI of Ice Club and uh, he said that they are especially looking at the possibility of uh, detecting uh, high energy neutrinos from uh, possible microblazers in our galaxy. I don't know if I have a short time uh, to mention uh, 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 micro, the role of microquasars in this incipient uh, gravitational wave astrophysics. Here you see uh, the masses in the, in, stellar, in the stellar graveyard and uh, you can see, well here we, we don't see the, uh, the, the scales but these are neutron stars, and this is in particular the uh, end product of the, neutron, the binary neutron star uh, merger. Uh, and uh, here are shown in violet the masses of uh, the black holes that have been identified uh, so far, uh, are indicated in, in, uh, in violet, and the masses of the black holes identified as uh, uh, gravitational wave sources are indicated in blue. And as you can see, the, the, uh, the masses of uh, the uh, gravitation of the uh, merging black holes that produce uh, gravitational waves are uh, far larger than the masses of the uh, uh, black holes identified from uh, X-ray observations. Now, when uh, the first uh, sources were discovered, uh, 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 physicists were surprised by the large masses and the large mergers rate uh, detected from binary stellar black holes. And uh, I must confess I was not uh, surprised because uh, we astronomers knew that uh, black holes form earlier in the evolution of the universe uh, could be much more massive than uh, black holes form uh, later uh, and that we see in the X-rays. Uh, we were surprised astronomers by uh, the sophisticated uh, technology that uh, extraordinary technology that uh, allowed the detection of gravitational waves. And this was, uh, I think, a conflict usually in committees uh, where there were astronomers and physicists to, uh, to provide uh, funds for gravitational wave astrophysics. And astronomers usually opposed, physicists were confident in, in the uh, 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 technology. Now, there are three basic, uh, three basic uh, uh, channels for the formation of binary black holes, the ones that will merge and produce uh, gravitational waves. One is the wide uh, binary system uh, in the field. The other is the closed binary system. And finally, the dynamical interaction in clusters. So binary black holes might be formed by dynamical interaction in clusters. But these two channels uh, assume that the black holes are formed without uh, energetic natal supernova explosions. Because if that is the case in this channel, the, uh, the black hole uh, formed from a binary massive stars, uh, uh, the binary uh, massive star, if there is an energetic uh, kick, uh, it sh the binary should be gravitationally disrupted. So the black hole must form to, uh, in this channel 
by direct collapse, namely without strong kick, natal kick, and in particular without energetic uh, supernova explosion. And also in the case of the star cluster, uh, you know the typical escape velocity from a, a globular cluster is a few tens of kilometers per second. If the massive star in the, in the cluster collapses through an energetic supernova, it will receive a kick and will escape from the cluster without the possibility of, uh, of uh, encountering uh, another uh, black hole. So, uh, so, and this model has been proposed precisely to uh, account for the formation of binary black holes despite the production of supernovae, because this assumes, this model, that the binary system is extremely close, so that the gravitational uh, uh, force is, is very strong and will not uh, the system be gravitationally disrupted. But in fact, these type of systems are not seen in our galaxy. And so uh, we don't know if uh, it, it has sense to propose, but th that was the motivation of this system. So the question is whether microquasars could help, um, help and provide evidence uh, to a massive stellar collapse by implosion. Uh, not by explosion, by implosion, where everything goes to the, to the black hole. And uh, in fact, uh, well, uh, you, you can see here, this is a cartoon uh, where you see a, uh, the, to form a binary black hole that will merge, you start in the first uh, channel with a massive stellar binary, you go through a phase of microquasar and end uh, as a binary black hole. And uh, the question is whether uh, the study of microquasars could provide evidences for black hole formation by implosion. And, uh, and in fact, uh, there are two uh, clear cases. One is uh, the black hole in Cygnus 61. Uh, we know now, uh, this is a paper published, this is an approach I made with Irapuan Rodriguez from uh, Sao Paulo, from, from Brazil, who work, uh, we work together in Sacle, uh, and, uh, and what uh, is, 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 uh, it was seen is the following. Uh, you can see here in, in yellow uh, the uh, parent association of massive stars, uh, Cygnus OB3, and here you see Cygnus 61, the motion projected on the plane of the sky. We know the motion in three dimensions of space. Uh, this is the, the difficult thing. And uh, Cygnus X3, uh, uh, the black hole should uh, not have been formed uh, through a supernova explosion with an ejection of mass greater than uh, uh, one solar mass. So uh, the black hole in Cygnus 61, which uh, has a mass of 15 solar masses approximately, and a donor star of, uh, uh, of 19 solar masses, we know that the space velocity of Cygnus 61 relative to the parent association of massive stars should be smaller than 9 kilometers per second, which is the typical dispersion velocity in, in an uh, asso association of massive stars. If there were a supernova explosion or a strong kick, Cygnus 61 should have been kicked out long ago from, uh, from the parent association of massive stars. And we can know that the uh, progenitor must have had approximately uh, four, 40 solar masses and must have uh, lost 25 solar masses by uh, stellar winds in a wolf rayet phase or by exchange of mass with the binary companion. So, and also the first superluminal source, this granite source, also we know it remained in situ. Namely, it doesn't have a, a, a anomalous velocity in three dimensions 
relative to its environment. Uh, and uh, <coughs> so, uh, uh, so uh, stars with uh, masses greater than 18 solar masses uh, may implode with no kicks ending as black holes. And this is a, a necessary condition for the two uh, uh, formation of binary black holes uh, channels that I have shown. So uh, binary black holes can be formed by channels A and C, and this uh, has an impact in uh, gravitational wave astrophysics. Uh, and uh, I explain that the high rates of uh, black hole mergers are related uh, to the mechanism of formation of black holes by implosion and not by uh, natal supernova explosions, energetics. And uh, so this is, uh, now we are improving this. For instance, this uh, result from 2003 has been confirmed later in 2011 by BLBI observations, by RAID, and now it's been confirmed we are using uh, Gaia uh, to improve the distance and proper motions of uh, these uh, black hole binaries. And this is becoming a whole industry and a way to uh, test in indirectly the formation mechanism of uh, stellar mass black holes which is important to understand uh, the high uh, merging rates of uh, black holes found by, uh, by, uh, by the uh, uh, gravitational wave uh, instruments. But there is also impact in, in cosmology because uh, this, uh, uh, these black holes, if they form uh, by direct collapse, they remain uh, bound to donor stars and they finish as black hole X-ray binaries that accrete mass and inject X-rays and jets to the intergalactic medium. And in fact, uh, as Laplace has <laughs> envisioned <laughs> long ago, uh, there should have been a very prolific production of, black, of, of stellar mass black holes uh, during the reionization epoch of the universe and the injection of X-rays and jets uh, should have uh, uh, imposed conditions on uh, the way in which uh, the intergalactic medium uh, during the reionization was heated and also uh, imposed limits to the uh, masses of uh, formations of the fast galaxies. And this was published uh, with a group of uh, Abby Loeb uh, in Harvard uh, that motivated uh, news and views in nature. And uh, I think that Gustavo Romero will talk uh, uh, more about this uh, in the last talk of this meeting. Okay, thank you.